All right, today I want to quickly, because of the time, I want to quickly talk to you about what I'm calling the Omaha of the Spirit. Now, guys are going to get that right away, of course. Yeah. Yeah. The Omaha. I wanted to find a picture where his back was turned to the picture and his hands were out like that. That's the picture I wanted. Couldn't find it, but I'm using this. But tonight I want to talk about basically when things don't go your way. All right? So tonight, Omaha of the Spirit, we're going to look at that. I don't know if that worked. Uh, try again. Okay. So you... To me, sometimes life can be like football. Uh, in football, you know, you have the huddle when you're on offense. You have the huddle, they call the play. Uh, let's say you're the receiver, and, like, they call the play, like, all oh, the ball is going to you, you're excited, right? You come out of the huddle, you're excited. Now you're not trying to let the guy on the other, other side of the line know you're too excited about it, he's going to pick up on it, right? So you're like, dude, the ball's coming to me. And sometimes you get up there, and they call an audible. It's like, man, it's not, it ain't going to me now? That, oh. Sometimes... It, it, life can be like that, all right? You come out of the huddle, you know what the play is, then at the line, the quarterback calls an audible. ball. What? Oh, man. The play changes, the ball is, is going, the ball's not going to you. It's not going your way. Sometimes life can do that. And has anybody ever experienced, like, man, things were going just according to my plan until this happens, right? Man, that's just so messed up. It happens sometimes. How do you respond in life when things are not going your way. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Uh, how do you respond if your dreams and plans get ruined? How many of you guys have dreams and plans and you ever feel like they just got ruined? They just got smashed right in front of your eyes, flipped upside down? Like, man, that's messed up. God, why'd you let that happen? I had all these plans. <laughs> yeah, but... Killed it. Killed it, God. <laughs> ever feel like that? That's what I want to talk about tonight. This happened to me. And this, this, you guys might think this is dumb, but I'm going to still talk about it. I'm going to talk about it anyway. I was jogging a couple of weeks ago. And I've been, I've been working on, I'm going to be honest, I've been working on getting a close relationship with God. Nice. Hey. Nice. Who, who's kidding me, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, here I am. I'm jogging. Started at 59th. I'm, I'm now in between 67th and 75th on Broadway. If anybody, do, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm now what I call in about the last third of the mile. And uh, I'm jogging along. The next thing I know, I see this bee on its back, and its legs were kicking full speed. And its arms, everything was just moving full speed. Like it was stuck. And it was trying to fix that, right? And I'm sitting there jogging by it. I'm like, it's just a bee, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? I kid you not. It was a bee, right? <laughs> I kept going. And something inside of me said, you should go back and help that bee. I'm like, I'm jogging. <laughs> Crazy? I ain't got time for that. I-, I kid you not. Here's what I said next. It'll only take about six minutes, and I'll be back. I'll be back in about six minutes. I had about three minutes to get to the end of to 75th, and then about probably maybe three minutes to get back to where that bee was, right? I, I literally said that, and I felt something in my spirit. You should have, you should help that bee. So the whole way I'm finishing that three minutes to get to the end of 75th, the whole time is just bugging me. I kid you not, a bee, <laughs> a bee on its back was bugging me. And I'm like, I just want to get my jog over with. I just want to finish. I just want to get home. I haven't ran six miles in forever. Because of all, you know, stuff. Forever. <laughs> really. So here I am. I disregard the bee. I, I go to 75th. I start coming back. And the whole, uh, the whole way back, I'm looking, where's the bee at? Where's the bee at? I'm just jogging, I'm looking for the bee. When I finally got to it, and I saw it. It got to the point where it wasn't moving anymore. And I bent down there. I found a, a, a rock. And I tried to just nudge it on its side. And it just wasn't moving. And then I, after I flipped it on its side, then I kind of gave it a little nudge. And it just barely moved. And I just felt convicted. No, I'm serious. I felt convicted. 
It was just to be, right? But what I want to talk about tonight is, is missed opportunities. And even as insignificant as a bee, there's, there's times in our life that God's trying to speak to us or impress something into our heart. Whether it be someone that you know, a family member, a friend, somebody at school. There's times that God's going to put somebody in your heart and we might just write it off. It's just a bee. Or it's just, it's just that. And that bugged me. That, I mean, it was just a bee, but it bugged me. It bugged me thinking God could actually have been impressing on my heart that I should have, even for a bee. I, here, here's the amazing part, right? God's the creator of everything. You think he loves other things less? You think he loves uh, people in the other country less than he loves us? I mean, even the animals. What, what blows my mind sometimes, this is even part of my message. Not even part of it. What blows my mind sometimes is thinking about how small but complex the small animals are. Mm-hmm. The really, or even the insects. When you think of how small they are and how complex that they have all the same systems that we have, but they're so small. Like, how in the world did you make that? It's so, I, I, I can't even. It's like a computer chip. It's amazing. And that's how incredible God is. The smallest things, but they have so much detail. All right, well, okay, it gets better. You guys are laughing about the bee. Wait till you get to this one. Oh, my gosh. Oh. oh. Okay, so a couple days ago, or a week, week, week and a half ago, I'm driving home, driving down 75th in the middle of the day. I think I just got done driving the pre- preschool bus. I'm driving down 75th from right here from the church. I just left. Driving down. And the right lane close to the shoulder. I see a pigeon. And I, I literally, as I was seeing it, and as I'm driving closer to it, I realized it had no uh, concept that a fast-moving vehicle is about to drive by it. And as I was approaching, I felt and I observed that it, was, it looked like it was in a state of shock like it was stunned, like it was unaware of where it was and it couldn't do anything about it. And I, that was basically confirmed to me as I drove by it and it still hadn't moved. And I drove pretty close to it. And I kid you not, something inside of me says, you should have stopped and helped it. At least off to the side of the road. I kid you not. I, I, felt, I felt something inside of me. Like, hey, you should at least help it off to the side of the road. What did I do? I went home. Later that day, I had to come back and drive the bus. Guess what I was looking for all the way? The pigeon. I was looking for the pigeon. Later that day, and where I believed to be the same spot, I saw a splatter of blood and feathers. A splatter of blood and feathers. In the, probably the same area where that pigeon was. And that kind of stabbed me again in the heart, thinking, what if, what if I had an opportunity to show kindness to a pigeon? Nobody likes pigeons. Or bees. But here's the thing. Here's the thing is, how many opportunities do we miss? How many times is God trying to put something on our heart? Now, I'm not saying maybe that was him. It could have been, right? It could have been. Hey, show some kindness to pigeon. Because it could have been a lesson for me. It could have been a test for me. Will I listen? It could have been a test. It could have been the spirit saying, hey, help that pigeon over. It's, I want to see if you're going to walk in faith. It could have been a test. And I just drove off and left it. What was funny is after that happened, I started learning my lesson. A little bit. Still working on it. Last Saturday when I left youth, I was driving home, it's about 10 o'clock at night, 75th, I turn left on Broadway, I start heading down, uh, probably less than half of a block down the road on Broadway, I'm driving by, next thing I know, I see, what the heck is that? I'm, I'm like, what, what is that? There was a shopping cart flipped upside down in the middle turn lane, and as I'm driving by, <laughs> as I'm driving by, I literally say to myself, somebody's about to have a bad night. <laughs> and then I felt in my spirit 
really? <laughs> You're just going to drive right by that shopping cart after you just said somebody's about to have a bad night. Really? You're going to drive by that shopping cart. Right, okay, I got you. Pull over the side of the road, turn around. And then now, I'm, now I'm driving in the middle turn lane in the dark with my hazards on. And I'm driving back in the middle turn lane going the wrong way. And I'm like, wait, what where did the shopping cart go? <laughs> and I, I, I just keep going. I keep going. I'm like, wait a minute. I, I had to pass it by now. Where did it go? What the heck just happened? And after I passed where I thought it was, I'm still confused. I'm looking around. Next thing I know, I see this guy barely. barely see him. I roll down my window. And I was like, did you move the shopping cart? He's like, what? Huh? I like, did you move it? He's like, huh? I don't think he spoke a lot of English. But finally... Finally, he said, "Oh no, it's okay, it's okay." And I'm like, "Where did he go?" <laughs> and I looked a little bit farther past me, and, and he already put it, pushed it off to the side. But I was like, "Okay, I, I don't want to miss too many opportunities." So what I want to tell you guys tonight is, God's going to put different things in our heart sometimes, and and how do we respond? So, hey, if the Holy Spirit prompts our heart to speak to a classmate or help a homeless person, do we write it off and say no? Just something to think about, right? It's easy to write off helping a homeless person, right? Because after all, we know what they're going to use the money for. How many of you have ever told yourself that? Or told somebody, I already know what they're going to use the money for. I'm not helping them. I'm not, help- I'm not giving them a dollar because I know they're going to get high. I know they're going to buy alcohol. I'm not going to do it. What if God just wanted us to be obedient? Think about wait. What if God just wanted us to be obedient? What if he put it on our heart to just be obedient and to bless somebody or to talk to somebody and not write it off, not to say, oh, I know what they're going to do, but just be obedient. (coughs) I just want you guys to think about that. So sometimes we're going to come through situations, whether you're at school, whether you're at home, whether you're here or there, God's going to put something on your heart sometimes or the spirit. Are you going to write it off? I know I've done it. I've already shown you my, my B example, my pigeon example. I'm working on it. Like I said, when I started, I'm, I'm trying to learn more. I'm trying to get closer to God. I, I want him to, to do something great with me. I don't want to just be, oh, okay, we're going to go to church this week, and I'm going to get there and speak a message. Oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. I want us to change the world. I want us to change our community. I don't want to just be average to get. Okay. Here's something that's powerful. I want you guys to always think about it. Do not uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. We're going to come across a lot of strangers in our life. Mm-hmm. Um, today I had an, a pretty awesome opportunity. We had the college fair for the foster kids today down at ASU downtown. Um, there happened to be a number of homeless people in the area at that same area, the, the, the kind of the campus. And we actually had some extra food today. And I talked to some of the people that were hosting the event. I was like, hey, I want to get some meal tickets for these people. And they're like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. And it, it was really cool. Was, um, you just got to walk up and just blow people away. It's like, hey, we had a food truck there. They were cooking burgers and sliders. I just got to walk up to some people. And I, I looked just kind of like, I looked like I could have probably been staying there, you know? <laughs> I had a pullover on. I had a fleece pullover and some shorts, and I'm just walking up to people like this. I'm like, hey, are you hungry? And some of them are like, what? Are you serious? I was like, yeah, there's a food truck right over here. You just got to give them this ticket. But it, it's kind of like this verse here. Sometimes God's going to put somebody in our path, and we might immediately write it off like, oh, they're asking for money. I ain't going to give it to them. I know what they're going to use it for. Sometimes we could be entertaining angels unaware. Here, here's a crazy verse that's not even part of my message tonight. Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Yeah. That wasn't even in there, but you're going to get it anyway. Okay. Romans 8, 9. You, however, are not controlled by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God is in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not... Belong to Christ. Whoa. Let, let, wait, uh, let's catch that real quick. 
And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Christ. You, however, are not controlled by the sinful nature. We're not supposed to be controlled by, uh, it's all about me, my lust, what I want, what I want, crave, desire, crave, desire, get, 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 get. We're not supposed to be living according to the sinful nature to please our flesh. Okay? We're supposed to be living by the Spirit. By God's Spirit, the one that wants to show us what to do. Anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to Christ. Okay? Let that sink in. i got to move fast. I could, I could go for a long time tonight. Okay. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are? Children. The children of God. Isn't that pretty cool? Yes. We're not led by the Spirit, though. <laughs> who are you the child of? I want to encourage you guys. I want to encourage you guys to be led by the Spirit of God. It's awesome to be a child of God. But just throwing this out there, man. These, these are some verses. I want us tonight to, to kind of... Get in tune with what he wants us to do. Okay. To seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given unto you as well. I threw this in there because sometimes we're so worried about the stuff. Like, I got to get the stuff. I got to get the stuff. I want the stuff. I want the stuff. I got to keep up. I got to have the upgrades. I got to have the new phone, the new shoes. But there there needs to come a point in time where we're led by his spirit. We're living for his purpose. He's leading us. He wants to bless us. He does. He knows what we need. Well, he is also a good father, and he wants to give us what we want. If, you know, if it's necessary, yeah, okay. But first, have we surrendered and said, here I am. Lead me. Your will be done in my life. What can I do for you? Or do we first come and say, this is what I want, God. Here's my list. But are we being led by his spirit? Seek him first. Okay, I love this verse just because of a couple words and you're going to see it. And I wanted to use it as, to emphasize the point. Whenever you're arrested, now, not, not all of you have been arrested, but whenever you're arrested, it's a cool verse in, in the context, but I want the key words. And brought to trial, do not worry beforehand what to say. Just say whatever is given you. There's, there's something cool and powerful in that statement right there. At the time, because it's not you speaking, but who? The Holy Spirit. Okay, so there are times that when he's prompting us to do something, that he can actually give us the words to say. Okay? And that's powerful. See, if we, if, we're, if we get to the point where we just yield to him and say, God, lead me by your spirit. He wants to move through us. There's, there's people that you need to touch. There's people in your schools, in your home and your family, that God wants you to speak a word into, like Josh and Jonathan. God wants you to, each one of you to speak into someone's life, because there's someone that only you can reach, and he'll give us the words if we're being led by his spirit. Okay? You shall receive power. power. When who comes upon you? The Holy Spirit. Okay, so can we, can we say there's a connection between the Holy Spirit and power? Yes. Yeah. Okay, how many of you want power? <laughs> okay. Now the right kind of power, of course. Yeah. You shall receive power, and the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses. So, He can come into your life as you're led by the Spirit. You, He can actually use your life to do great things, miracles, signs, wonders, all that kind of stuff. God wants to actually move in our lives so that the world that doesn't know Him will see His love, will see His power, will want to. Man, I want to make heaven my home. God wants to use you so that people will want to go to heaven will want to give their life over to him. He wants us to be led by his spirit. He wants us to be sensitive to the bees and the pigeons. But in our cases, it might be the friends and loved ones and other things like that. Unless you want to have an animal ministry too. I don't know. Okay. Jesus. How God anointed Jesus and others with what? Holy God Ghost. anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. And with power. And with power. Now, I, I pointed this out. One of the times when we did baptism, that when Jesus was baptized, it said the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. Yes. And then, and then after that point, he went out and started doing miracles, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you probably remember me talking about that. I do. He was baptized first. The Holy Spirit came on to him in the form of a dove. Then is when he started that we can see in the word. Then he went out and started doing miracles. This verse saying, hey, God anointed Jesus with the, with the Spirit and with power. Okay? And he went around doing what? 
good. Doing good. That's what he wants us to do as his spirit leads us. Okay? There's people that he, he needs you to reach. He needs you to rescue people from going to hell. He needs you to do good in some people's life who are about ready to quit in life. And I say, man, it's, it's not worth it anymore. I'm done. And healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. Jesus was anointed with what? He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. He needed it just as much as we do, I guess. Right? It was the power. The power. So I encourage you guys to walk in the Spirit. Um, if you guys have been coming for a while, when we, when we do our prayer time, I always have you guys pray in presence. I want you to heart your mind, your thoughts. Not out loud. Why? Because I want you to feel His presence. I want you to feel His Spirit in your life so that you can begin to learn to hear His voice. Now, I would personally love for him to just, maybe like, in our understanding, pick up the phone and say, hey, Jeff, that person over there, yep, go take care of it. I would love him <laughs> to do that. But he speaks to us in different ways, okay? Mm-hmm. So we need to be led by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and be sensitive to what he wants us to do. Okay? Bow your hands, close your eyes. All right, first thing. Is there anyone in this room tonight with every head bowed and every eye closed? You're not where you need to be. Time here on this earth would be cut short for any unknown reason. Make heaven your home. If your, your time here on this earth would be cut short for any unknown reason, you're not sure of your salvation. You're not sure if heaven's going to be your home. And you want to make that decision tonight. I want Jesus in my life. I want God to forgive me of my sins. If that's you tonight, with every head bowed and every eye closed, raise your hand. Quite a few hands going up. All right. Now this is the part where I want everyone, in your heart, your mind, your thoughts, I want you to have a moment of intimacy with God. You put your hands up. I want everyone, not out loud, but just inside of yourself. In your own words, I want you to just take a few moments and just thank God, first of all. I want you to thank Him that He allowed His Son to die on the cross for you. That he took all of your sins upon his body. That he became your sin payment. He took all of your wrong upon him. God allowed Jesus to do that. I want you to thank God for allowing him to his, allow his son to do that for you. His son that did no wrong. And I want you to thank Jesus that he was willing to go through that, that suffering. He could have probably just said, hey, God, uh, I changed my mind. I want to come back. But he went through it. In the garden it says, he said, not my will, but your will be done. He went through it. I want you to thank Jesus for going through that for you. To take all of your sins upon his body. For him to believe and for his body to be broken. Thank him. I want you to say his name a couple of times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you would do that for me. The next thing I want you to do. Just tell him you're sorry for the things that you've done that were wrong for your sins. And then ask him in his grace to forgive you. To wash your sins, as the word says, as far as the east is from the west. The Bible says that though your sins be as scarlet, they should be made white as snow. I want you to ask him to forgive you. And then to come into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. Last thing I want you to do in your own words, in your own in your own way, ask him to lead you by his spirit. Because there's people he needs you to reach. You have a purpose. God has you here on this earth. God has you in Phoenix. God has you in this church tonight because you have a purpose and he needs you to live for that purpose. Somebody's life could be Ending soon, and he needs you to reach them. So ask him to lead you by his spirit. And I want you to finish by again thanking Jesus for his great love for you, for his grace. Okay, look up. I'm going to ask the question again. How many of you felt his presence inside of you when you did that? Raise your hand. How many of you felt his presence 
inside of your heart when you did that. Now, from this message, you can put your hands down, from this message, that's how you can get in, kind of in tune, connected to His Spirit. Anytime during the day, you can do what you just now did. You can go through your day. Because the Bible talks about pray without ceasing, right? Well, when you're at school, it's kind of hard to be like, teacher asks you the question, oh, I thank you, Jesus, for it. And you're like, wait a minute, no, I didn't. Ask. What are you doing? Get out of here. You can't, you can't always pray out loud, you know, but you can do this at any time of the day. Any time of the day. In your heart. In your mind, and your thoughts, you can just begin, thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you that you allow your son to die for me. Lead me by your spirit. Who do you want, who do you need me to talk to today? Who do you need me to show your love to today? And you can feel his presence at any time of the day. So I want to encourage you guys of that. But also, not just walk in the spirit. Be sensitive to what he might put <coughs> on in the heart. He might impress <coughs> sometimes in your, in your mind or in your thoughts. You might be driving by a bumblebee of your own sort one day or a pigeon of your own sort one day. You might go by a homeless person and you might actually have the ability to do something and you might have a tug on you like you did with the bee and the pigeon and the shopping cart. Okay? So I want you guys to make that like your, your challenge for this week is to do what he puts in your path this week and what he tugs in your heart. But you need to first ask them when you maybe when you start your day to show you and to speak to you and show you what he wants you to do. So that when that time does come and you see your bee or your, your pigeon or whatever it might be, you know. Alright? So I want to challenge you guys to walk in the spirit this week. And then I want to hear what happened next Saturday. I want you guys oops. On two Saturdays. I'm taking a small vacation next week. Um, but anyway, thank you. You can't. Huh? Well, what? You yeah, deserve it. Yeah, for some of you guys don't know, I've had going? like eight events in two weeks that I was kind of responsible for, so I'm finally getting the weekend off. But anyway, hey, I love you guys. Please, Fun. please, um, again, your, your challenge from me, your challenge from me, your challenge from me, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because this is important. I know I've said it ten times already. Your challenge from me is to ask God to lead you this week. And to maybe even ask Him to put somebody in your path that He needs you to speak to or to help or to bless or to show God's love to. Even though you guys, not all of you are looking at me right now. <laughs> I just said it anyway. Okay. Ben, will you close this in prayer? Okay, I guess I'm doing this. They are? Okay, so the tables and chairs are here. We're only going to set them up in the grass. We're not going to mess up the basketball court. But we, we do ask as many people that as can to help. All right, what were you saying? I guess I'm doing it. Yes. You want to stand <laughs> okay. or sit? I'm going to be up here with you. There you go. We got this. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray to you, Lord, thank you for this amazing night that we've had together. In this place of worship, I thank you for being with us and for leading us and for this great word that we were given today, Lord. May it resonate in all of us and have an impact on all of our lives, Lord. For the coming week that we have, may it influence us in all that we do. May we find the bee on the road and help it. May we find the pigeon and help it. Lead us in everything we do, Lord. Always be with us. Show us our, your plan for our lives and let us know that it is you who has a plan for us, even if it is not what we want to do. For if we want to finish this mile, but you have something else in plan for us, show us that it is your plan. And that is a better and bigger plan than we can see right now. Do not let us ignore it, but let us see it. And let us go for what you have in mind for us. And Lord, all of us, we just thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you they are always with us and they are always giving us hope. And you're the light at the end of the tunnel and where there is darkness, you light it up with all the light in the world, Lord. Always with us, always giving us hope. And in your son Jesus' name I just pray, amen. amen. amen.